What up my crafty peeps? It's Luann. Hello! I am here with a tutorial on how I made this mini book. This mini book is on my channel uh, under, I can't remember what it's called, and but oh, I will try to post the link as everyone does below. <laughs> but you probably can't see that. I probably should have done this right below. <laughs> anyway, sorry. I had to add that. <laughs> I crack me up sometimes. Anyway, this is the book that I made. I'll show you the back because I do have pictures. I have a pocket on each page and this page flips up like this and then there's a top loading pocket with a tag and it's the same thing on the other side with the same tag of course. The pocket here it flips up and each page is identical to the others. So this is the book. I did ribbon binding. If you need, if you want to see the complete book you can see the other video that I did on this one or on the, that one that I just put over there. This one here, I did a video, hmm, I'd already done a video on how I put this book together, but it was way too long and I need to shorten it up. So I am going to try to go through this as quickly as I possibly can. This is the, the book that I made for my son. The only difference that I made for the, that I made with this one was that I added an additional flap, flip, flap, flip pocket or page here. Um, I haven't matted it yet, but there's an additional flap here. You can add all sorts of flips and flaps and folds and all that stuff, but it's pretty much the same. Um, with I used um, some sort of twine. It's not baker's twine, but it's similar to that uh, to bind it. And I used this one because I'm going to cover it up. I'm not going to have this shown. So what you will need are clasp envelopes. Um, I am actually going to be making a mini to house my wallets. I tried to find more wallets to get a better idea of the size of them. I'm pretty sure they're all about this size. I really actually don't know, like I've never had to measure a wallet and I didn't bother looking it up. So I'm pretty sure the average size is this. I think my husband actually threw out all my wallets recently, which makes me kind of sad and that's an entirely different story to tell. Um, so th this book that I'm making is to house my wallets. So this envelope that I'm using, the clasp envelope, measures if you fold the flap here, 10 and a half by seven and a half inches. So the first thing you'll need to do is to determine how high you want your book to be. For this book, I wanted my book to be six inches high and the width will determine, sorry, you will determine the width yourself as well as the height. Um, but I'll go over the width in a second. This one is five inches, which is half of the envelope, the clasp envelope that I used. So I know that I want my my base page. I'll just set this out right here. My base page, which is this page, to be four inches high, so that it can fit my wallet. So my first score is going to be at four inches. And where is my score thingy? Oh wait, that's not it. It's over here. Okay, so I'm going to score at four inches. I think this is the really big thingy. Sorry, I got this one. I'm going to score at four inches. And then the next thing you will determine is how, how high you want your flap page to be, which is this page. You can make it a little bit smaller than your base page, uh, which I would, in this book, I went a quarter of a lint quarter of an inch smaller than my base page so I went five and three quarters or you can make it a little bit shorter or you can make it the exact same size. You also have to determine whether or not you will need or you will add this pocket here. So I want my flat page to be three and seven eighths of an inch high. So I'm going to score from my four inch mark up three and seven eighths. So that would be seven and seven eighth inches. And I hope I'm not confusing you. Now if I wanted it to be just three and three quarters then obviously it would be at seven and three quarter inches. Um, but again it's your adjustments that however high you want your book to be. Now for the pocket for this pocket here you will need to add an additional inch and a fourth. So one and one quarter inches. And I have my clasp here so I'm going to remove that before I score. 
and I have these little round nose plier thingies and um, the seam is in the center so this page here is underneath this page here you're going to want to pull off the clasp on the page that is overlapping the bottom page only if you do it the other way from this side you might just detach both pages so be very careful sometimes it's, e it's easy sometimes it's not actually ruined a couple of other pages for the other ones that I have prepped and I had to alter how I wanted them set up so okay so I have my score at four inches and then seven and seven eighths and then I need to add one and one quarter inches so my score thing is right here so that would be nine and one eighth of an inch and another reason why I am redoing this video was because I kept saying the measurements wrong and I was going to edit and add little notes, but it, I just did it way too many times. Okay, so I'm scoring at 9 and 1 eighth, and where I pulled the little clasp, the page is, the page is lifted. So I'm just going to flip it over and finish scoring on the other side. At 9 and 1 eighth. And you also need to go over all of the scores that you just did. Okay, so you have, or I have my four, my score line at four inches, seven and seven eighths, and nine and one eighth. So here's my opening. Obviously, you can see that. You're going to turn the envelope upside down because you need a, a flat, straight line on your edge to crease. And you're going to score half, of, or you're going to score down the middle of your envelope. Sorry. I'm trying not to confuse everybody. You're going to score down the center of your, uh, of your envelope. I'm using seven and a half uh, size envelope, so I'm going to score it three and three quarters. But if you wanted to make one page wider than the other, you can score, you can adjust your measurements to do that. You don't have to score down the center. You can score wherever you want, however, however wide or narrow, if you want your pages to overlap as they fold, which I've done with another mini however you want but for this one I'm scoring down the center so three and three quarters you're gonna flip it over and score at the back too or on the back okay so now you're done with your scoring you're gonna bring out your trimmer I have a gigantic trimmer that I'm using for right now and what you're going to do is you are going to cut off the excess piece. So I have my four inch score line here and then I have uh, my seven and seven eighth score line here and then my nine and one eighth. So I'm gonna cut off where my nine and one eighth score line is at. So basically you're cutting off the excess. And you throw this away. Okay, so now you have your top open here, and then you have your score line right here, which should be one and a quarter inches from your opening, and then you have your center score here, which should be four inches above your, your bottom piece of the envelope. So now what you're gonna do is you are going to, let me draw a line so you can see. Should I, yeah, I'll draw, I'll draw a line so you can see in my marker pen is right here. There's my center score. Four inches from the bottom. And then one and one quarter from the top or three and seven eighths from the four inch point. So with your opening up top, what you're going to do is you're gonna line up your paper where your score line is on the cut line, which is for me three and three quarters, like that. And then you're going to move it over to your right one eighth of an inch, or two sixteenths of an inch and you're going to cut from the opening, the top opening of your envelope to your second score line here. 
No more. Don't pass it. I passed mine so many times. You're going to take out your paper, you're going to rotate it and do the same thing. So line it up, your score line with your cut line, and then move it over one eighth of an inch. Over to your right, one eighth of an inch. And bring it out all the way, and you need to trim out, trim down the side here. So because there are no measurements up top, I just line up the edge of my envelope with the edge of the cutting, this cutting base here, and that's roughly about an eighth of an inch. Make sure you line it up pretty good. And you cut all the way down your score line. Remember, don't pass your score line. I usually stop a little bit before my score line and then cut the rest with scissors. So then you're going to flip it over and you're going to do the same thing to the other side. Like that. And you're done with your trimmer for now. So now if your cutter didn't go down all the way to your score line, mm -hmm. now is the time to cut all the way down to your score line. And you know, why is it, I have, I've done several of my books with like so just complicated assembly and I don't know, I know why I do it, I do it because it looks nice but sometimes it's just way too much work. Okay, so now you have something that should look like this. And here's your bottom. So you're going to grab your first flap here and you're going to fold it down. Oh, before you do that, um, I'm working on the inside of my envelope where the seam for the envelope is right here. So you'll have this little bit that is stuck on this flap that is usually not glued down very well. So make sure you trim that off. Okay, so you're going to fold your page down. Make sure it lines up with your edge. Bring down your other one, line it up, hold on top, turn it over and do the same thing. So now you have these excess bits right here, cut those off. And when you cut this center piece, make sure you don't go over any of your side pockets. Okay, so those are cut off. Throw these away. Okay, so now we're going to make our pockets. These pockets here. So here is your other score line right there that was uh, one and a quarter inches from the top of your open envelope. You're just going to fold those up. And for this book that I'm doing, I don't want every page to have a pocket. So what I have decided to do is to have an additional flip page. Actually, I'm not going to have an additional flip page. This is actually going to be my inside. So I'm actually going to cut off these two pieces. So I'm going to bring back my scoreboard or my cutter and just cut those two pieces off. And because I've cut this bit here, I'm, it's not going to line up properly up here, so I just lined up, lined up my score line with my cut line on my little cutting mat. Okay, so these two are just going to be flip pages. They're not going to have any pockets. So now you're going to fold your envelope in half. To fold your envelope in half, make sure you're folding in on where you, the seam is. So here's the inside of the, of the seam, or sorry, the seam of my envelope is right here where it's glued. Fold in on that. You don't want it to fold out because, I'll show you right now, if you fold it out, it's not glued. So that'll come apart. So you want to make sure that you fold in on that to avoid it c coming apart on you. So you do that. 
So now you have your flip pages here on your on the inside. And if you want to keep the pockets, you can totally keep the pockets. And then here's the front, and then here's your first pocket here, and then the back. So with one envelope, you've created four pages with two top loading pockets right there. So now we're going to add our holds. But before you do that, I didn't do this on mine because I wanted I didn't want the video to go too long. But I would paint all of my edges with acrylic paint. For my other book that I did for my daughter, I used a very light um, ink for my ink pads and it didn't it didn't show up on this color. If you're going to use ink pads, use a darker color. The darker the color, the truer the color will be once you're done inking. So I'm actually going to put the book together and then take it apart to paint it. Um, but for the purpose of the tutorial, I'm not going to paint. So you're going to add your holds for your binding, and we're going to do ribbon binding on this one. So I'm going to poke my holes with my Tim Holtz pokey tool directly onto the seam, the center fold. Sorry, the center. I meant to say the center fold. Okay, so you're going to find your center and for this one I actually wanted to do only two holes for this one but I messed up and I did four on the other so I'm just gonna go with four so for this one depending on the size of your book or depending on the size of your, your book that will determine where you place or how many holes you have and where you place them so for this one I'm actually going to place them at half an inch and one and a half inches so half inch and one and a half inches. And just make sure you go back and make your holes a little bit bigger. And please don't poke yourself. I totally poked myself with doing the other ones to prep them. And it hurt. And I bled. But I didn't cry. Not yet. Okay, so now we're done with this. So we're going to put this away and we're going to go to our binding. And here are my other pages. I'm actually going to do four for this one. And let's see. There we go. So there are all my holes right there. Oh, yes. I don't know why I'm clipping them, but I'm clipping them. All right. So for your binding, you're going to need chipboard and Tyvek. Woohoo! Here's my chipboard. And here's my Tyvek. I haven't <laughs> prepped this yet. I'm not going to add the Tyvek again for the sake of time, um, but I will go over how you would do that. You're not going to add it, add it to your book yet. So my chipboard here is four and a half inches by I don't even know how long. I just need it to be long enough to wrap around my front and back pages. This is actually five and three quarters, but it doesn't matter. You want to make sure it wraps around your book. I don't have an exact exact measurement. But I know I will have more than enough room for it to wrap around my book. Let's see? So I have four pages here. Yeah, four pages. So I need four score lines for each one of my pages because you will be binding your page directly onto the score line. And then you will have two additional score lines, front and back, to give your book extra room for growth, for expansion. So I am going to score down the center of this piece of paper which is, I don't know what five and a half is. Jeez. Seriously, two and three quarters? Am I, I'm guessing, no? Well, it's actually a little bit lar larger than uh, five and three quarters, so I'm going to score at, just score down the center. <laughs> that's, that's the easiest way to do it, so just score down the center. I mean, I'm just going to eyeball it because I know I have enough room for my sides to wrap around my page. Okay, so that is my first score line and that is going to be for one of my pages. So I need four score lines for my pages. So the depth for this one for my um, room between pages is going to be three eighths of an inch. So from your first score line, you're going to go over, or I am, I'm going to go over three eighths of an inch and score and then I'm going to go over one more time three-eighths of an inch and score 
and then I'm going to go back to my center and go the other way and score 3 eighths of an inch. So now I have four score lines and they're each 3 eighths of an inch apart. Now for the first score line and the last score line, I'm going to go on the outside and score an additional quarter of an inch. So on my last score line, I will be scoring from that a quarter of an inch next to it. Oh my gosh, I hope that makes sense. And again, from your first, first score line here, you're going to go out to your left a quarter of an inch. So it should look like that. You have your first score line and then a quarter of an inch, three eighths, three eighths, three eighths, and then a quarter of an inch. So each one of these is going to hold a page. And then the outside score lines give your room room for expansion. So you're going to flip it over and you're going to rescore on those exact lines. The same lines that you did. Okay, so you fold it up like so. Now, my book is four inches high. This one is four and a half inches high. And the reason it's four and a half inches high is because I, I have ribbon on this book and it's, you can see it. I, I'm going to put little tabs for my pockets or my tags in the pockets and I don't want to see those. So I made my book a little bit or the cover a little bit higher so that when it's closed, you can't see that. So what we're going to do next is poke the holes into my book. Now, because I've added that extra length to it. I'm not going to find my center on the chipboard and then punch the holes the way I did this one. I'm actually going to line up one of these pages onto the score line itself to the bottom. Make it flush with the bottom because I do want my book to be flush at the bottom. And I'm going to score where those Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to poke my holes in accordance to this. And again, that is because I'm, I added an additional length here for my tags. Sorry, my tabs. So we're going to do that to all of your pages or all of your score lines. And again, if you were not going to do this, if you were going to just keep it the way I did the other book and just have the ribbon hang off the top of your book, you would just cut your chipboard the same height as your pages and you would you know, find your center and, score and poke your holes in the same spot that you did for your pages. And oh my God, I hope I hope, I seriously hope I'm making sense. It's late, it's been a long week, long week, let me tell you. And I am about ready to just knock out. Says me who goes to bed at two in the morning on the weekends. Who, you know, which one of us doesn't? I think we all do, we all go to bed late. I wait for my kids to go to bed and then I start my crafting. I don't like doing this stuff when they're awake. I feel like I'm taking time away from them and it's not fair. And, you know, I'm a full-time mom. Sorry. I'm a full-time... I work full-time and I'm with my kids as little as they can possibly give me because I work all day. So I get home, make dinner, feed the kids, yell at the kids because they don't want to sit in the kitchen and eat. They want to run around and eat everywhere. And then they go to bed. So... That's like a whole two and a half hours that I have with my kids at night. Okay, so you will see here that I score that I poked my holes only on the score lines where my pages are going to be bound on. The outside score lines I have left alone. You do not need to you, sorry, you don't need to do anything with those. So now what you would do, which is I'm not going to do this for the sake of time, is you're gonna grab your tie back. And you can either have one continuous piece to wrap around or you can have a piece to wrap around this way and then another one to cover it up. I just have one piece. But what, you, what you're gonna do is you're only gonna glue one side first. So for example, you would glue, cover 
your entire piece of chipboard or the Tyvek with, I use ATG, ATG or uh, score tape or any type of glue that you like um, would work. Don't use hot glue uh, because the hot glue will stop you from poking through or it'll be harder for you to poke through the hot glue. So you're going to glue the back side first and then you're going to repoke your holes to make sure they go through your Tyvek and then you're going to cover up the inside glue it down and then repoke your holes so that your holes are going all the way through the front and the back so once that's done you can ink your edges or ink your Tyvek like I did here I, I did a pink for this one you can ink it with a stamp pad uh, you can paint it with acrylic paint you can spray it, mist it, whatever you want, dab it, it doesn't matter whatever you want to do, do it this would be the time to do it but again for the sake of time I'm not going to do that today I'm just going to bind it and then I'm going to take it apart and then paint everything <laughs> okay so here are my pages and I wanted to go over a couple of changes that I did for this one that I didn't do for my other books so for this one for the pocket the way you seal it you can do one of two things you can either add a bead of glue here and just seal it up or you can have one by one quarter inch sorry one one inch squares, so one by one inch squares fold it in half angle it at the top and then attach it here and then close it up that will give you a full functioning pocket so you won't have any restrictions on the side if you're going to paint your envelope the way I did for this one I actually painted it everything is painted with blue acrylic oh, sorry blue acrylic paint you can see the dark blue paint paint oh my god I can't talk so don't add your hinges before you paint add them after you paint the only reason I haven't done it I haven't tried it but I haven't done it because I'm afraid when I paint it'll remoisten the the glue I don't know I don't even know if it if it'll actually happen but I don't want to risk it detaching and then having to glue it all over again so glue sorry paint your pages you know, ink all of your pages, then add your hinges, try to match the color with the color that you use to ink your edges, or just do the same thing, get white ones and just dab it with the same paint or, you know, ink pad or whatever. Add your hinges and close it up. So these front ones, all of them are going to be pockets, but on the inside for this one, I'm actually going to have an additional flap. So, for example, I have this piece here that I've mitered the edges. You can see that there and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a piece of paper or cardstock and I'm just going to sandwich it this is a very badly cut piece of paper because I covered my book with this one but I'm just going to use this as an example I'm just going to grab this and just sandwich it to this little flap here make it even with this piece here so I will have an additional page so I can have my photo here like that and then it'll open up and I can have one photo here and another photo here which will give me more space for photos so and I will be posting a video on this finished book once I'm done so I did that with this one and then I think that was the only other change other than just cutting off the excess bit and not having a pocket and not having a flap an additional flap it's just this one flap so now let's attach our pages I'm just going to use this twine here, fake twine, I don't know what it is actually, it's some sort of twine. Um, I'm going to bind it and then I'm going to take it apart and do all my inking so I'm not using anything fancy right now. And if you're going to cover up your spine, you want to make sure that you use um, something that's thin or something that's not so you know, pretty that you wish you hadn't covered up. Okay, so I'm using one of these thick I don't even know what kind of needle that is. It's a thick needle. I think it's a knitting needle, maybe. I don't know. Okay, so here we have my chipboard, and here we have my page. And you will see that when it's flushed to the bottom, I have this ex excess bit up here, and that will be for when my book is when my book is closed. I will have my tags closed, or sorry, covered up. I'm really sorry, you guys. I'm like totally out of it. You grab your needle and your thread and you're going to go through the top 
hole on your first score line and then you're going to go in on the top hole of your envelope. And I do have a tutorial on, on this ribbon binding already on my channel, so if you don't want to see this, you don't have to. You can just shut it off now and, and well, if you already know, or you can go to the other one, the other video, but they're pretty much the same thing, except for with this one, I'm actually using one piece of ribbon or twine versus individual pieces, pieces for each page. Okay, so I went in through the first hole, out the second, and then I'm going back in on my third, and then I'm going to go back out on the fourth, through my page, and through my spine. And then you're going to pull your string, make it taut. And then you're going to go back in from the outside on your third hole and make sure you don't split the ribbon or the yarn or twine whatever you're using don't split it which means don't don't go through it because that'll stop you from pulling it tight when you need to at the end so now you're going to go back out through your second hole and again make sure you don't split your ribbon pull it tight both pieces and then what you're going to do is you're going to make a knot and the knot make sure you make it as close to the top hole as possible like you want your knot to be right on your top hole your first pierced hole double knot it like so Okay, so now what you're going to do is you're going to get your second sheet. So your inside would look like this. And fold that over. Grab your second sheet or your second page. You're going to go in through the second score line, top hole. And then in through your page, first hole on the top. Out the second through your page and through your spine and then in back through your third and then out your fourth like so and then you need to go back in through your third and again, don't forget, don't split your ribbon. And then out through the second. And then to tie this piece off, because now you're back at the top, let me zoom in real quick so you can see. And that's as far as you can go. Okay, so what you're going to do make sure you pull your ribbon tight make it taut and hold it down right here in the center and slide your needle underneath this little loop that you made when you connected your first and your second score line okay so you have that and now you're gonna hold it at the very top where the hole where the first top hole is and you're going to go in through this side now only through the second score line or the score line that you're currently working on and you're going to tie it off so now I have my loop that's underneath this piece here and now you're going to put your needle through this loop and you're going to pull it to make a knot like that and don't remove your finger until you know that knot is, that knot is nice and tight so now you're going to go to your third score line and do the exact same thing. So I think now is the time to tell you how my husband threw away my wallets. And I'm pretty much doing the same thing. Going through my first, out the second, in the third, out the fourth, and then back in the third, out the second, and in the first to tie it off. 
Anyway, you know how we all have a junk drawer in the kitchen? We know, you know y'all, y'all have it. I have one. You guys have one. So I have my junk drawer and I have all sorts of stuff in there. I have my wallets in there. I Don't ask me why I have wallets in there. I just have wallet pictures in my kitchen. I think it's because my nieces and nephews come over and they give them to me and they're on my fridge for like a second and then they go in the junk drawer because I have nowhere else to put them. So that was in there and the covers for the electrical sockets are in there because you know I have two kids. One's two and the other's four. And then I have recipes in there, recipes that I've yet to use because I have no time. And what else do I have in there? I had like an Easter thing in there. I had little fancy Easter eggs that I cut out for my Cricut. Anyway, I had all sorts of stuff in there. I had the those car freshener clip-ons that you put on, on the vent. I had that in there. Well, he had some sort of a fit one day and he threw away everything. I'm not kidding you, everything. Every single thing he threw away. My pictures, my recipes, everything. And I was so upset. I get out of, I was working on something, I can't remember what. And I go out into the kitchen and <laughs> the drawer is completely empty. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, well, I threw everything away. I'm like, why would you do that? That's not your, it's pretty much my junk drawer. Nothing in there is his. So I think he just got mad and he decided to throw everything away and I was so upset because he threw away recipes that I really wanted to use and my pictures and keys, just things that I I know I need for something. Okay, so before I continue on with my story, I'm going to tie this up so you can see it again. You're going to go in through the loop that you made, the connection you made between your second and your third score line. You pull it tight and hold hold it right here on your first hole so that your ribbon isn't loose or your twine or whatever you're using isn't loose and you're going to go in on the side right here like that only through this one here not the other two come out and then go in through the loop and pull towards your finger make sure it goes under your finger and you have a knot and make it tight and then you go in through your last score line or for me it's going to be my last score line Anyway, he threw everything away, and I was so upset, and I didn't talk to him that night. It was late, and I was like, I'm not talking to you. And he knows when I actually tell him I'm not talking to him, I mean business. And we worked together. <laughs> we worked together. So the next morning, we got up, and we're getting the kids ready, and I am not talking to him. I'm not giving him a single word. If he asks me something about the kids I will answer his question but I'm not having a single conversation with him that is not related to we need to get ready and get to work and drop off the kids at daycare so I didn't talk to him went to work and we never take breaks together because you know he has we, we work together and we were married you, we, we don't need to hang out at work so he took his break and I, I'll usually take my break and uh, he called me right before break and he's like, oh, you want to go out for a walk? Because I always ask him to go walking and he always says no, you know, around the block. So I'm like, no. And he said, how long are you going to be mad at me? And I said, for as long as I want to. And I can't believe I said that, but I actually did tell him that. And I've never said that to him before, ever. He's the nicest guy in the world. I love him. He's, he's a great husband and a great father. I don't know what the hell he was thinking at that time when he threw everything away. So he didn't talk to me again. He didn't attempt to talk to me or make things right with me. He did apologize. I'll give you that. He apologized that morning and he apologized at work around break and in the morning. And I just, I was, it was just one of those things that he couldn't fix that easily. So he just left it alone. He left me alone. Blah. So I come home because I, our hours are half an hour apart. So he starts 8.30, I start at 5, sorry, at 8. I leave at 5, he leaves at 5.30. So I pick up the kids on the way home. He drops them off at daycare. So I come home and I walk into my kitchen and everything that he threw out was perfectly laid out on the island. And mind you, he did this the night before trash day. So he threw everything out and everything was in the trash out in the street to be picked up. Was it the night before trash day? 
Yeah, it was. So it was actually trash day when, when he actually came home at lunch, took the bag out of the trash and just took everything out. And I got home and everything was laid on the island. And I couldn't believe that he had actually done that. And I had to forget and just let it go at that point because he he knew he had messed up. But anyway, I can't find a lot of my wallets, so I'm pretty sure they all went to the trash. Anyway, that was the whole point of the story. So I actually took the loop or the string out of my needle and I wasn't supposed to yet. Um, so I'm going to pretty much do the same thing I did with the other sides here and just loop it through my last connecting piece, pull it tight, pull it tight and then hold it right at the hole and then go in through this side like that, only through this one, see only through this one right here and then I'm going to go back in the loop to make a knot and just pull it. So that is my knot and I am done. And for this one, um, again, I'm not actually finished with this one. Actually, I'm going to take it apart and paint it and add the Tyvek and all that fun stuff. But um, here's the ribbon. And what you will do is you will just secure it again by making a couple knots here. And if you're going to have your ribbon or your Tyvek or sorry, or your twine visible out here, what I did is I just had like three pieces, like six pieces of ribbon and I just looped them underneath the adjoining pieces here, like here and there and there. I just tucked it under and I made a knot so that it was an even little puff on top and just not at the center. So let me cut this ex excess bit. So now I've tied it off, I've had a couple knots and for this one I'll probably cover up the spine. So this is my book, my little teeny tiny wallet book. I think it's so cute. And there's a top right there. And you open it up and you can see the space that I've added for my tabs, for my pockets. You open up this way. And then for your cover, um, the cover, I use chipboard and basically what I do is I'll get, okay people just bear with me, pretend these are the same size as this right here and basically what you'll do is you'll either get one long piece folded in half and then sandwich it together like this actually should I I think I will sorry guys okay so here's my chipboard so my pages are three, actually I know how long I want my cover to be. My pages are three and three quarter inches wide, so my spine is going to be, or my cover is going to be four and a half, because that is how tall my spine piece is. Four and a half by, how is that possible? Yeah, four and a half by, I'm going to go three and seven eighths. Actually, sorry, I'm not going to cut yet. I'm going to score at three and seven eighths. And then fold. There is a method to my madness. And then I'm going to have another piece. Three and seven eighths. And I'm going to fold like that. Um, I'm folding a long piece of chipboard. I have a lot of this stuff, so I don't mind folding it over like this. Um, but it's really thin. It's not thick at all. So I'm going to double it up to give it a little bit more stability. Now I'm going to bring out my trimmer and now I'm going to cut at 3 and 7 eighths.
I like doing it this way because then my edges are absolutely perfectly even. If I do it the other way where I cut and then score, it won't be even. I It happens to me all the time. Oh, my dimensions are right there. Duh. Okay, so... And I'm just basically cutting off the excess. And then my book is four and a half inches high, so I'm going to cut at four and one half. The same thing for this one. Okay. So assuming that my tie back is attached, whoa, sorry, my lamp is attached to my, I'm working in my closet. <laughs> I have one of my workspaces in my closet and my lamp is attached to the accordion door back here. So my cutter was holding open the accordion door and it moved. So there, that was the, the moving light. It's not a ghost. So basically now what I would do is I have this peach, peach, this piece, which is my cover, and I would just sandwich it onto the excess or the remainder of the overhang for the spine like this. Front and the back. And that is how I would create my cover. Now, what I did with this book is I didn't, I didn't go all the way flush to the score line, like that. I was out a little bit like that, and then I covered it with ribbon. But you, again, you can do it however you like. I used my ATG. Um, another thing you can do is once your covers are attached, you can just wrap it with another piece of cardstock. Maybe do like a decorative edge. So yeah, here's the book. Start to finish. I'm so sorry if the video is long. If it's too long, I will cut off my story bit. Um, so if it is cut off and you are listening to this story bit, then there is no story bit. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Um, this is my version, my take, my new take on the clasp envelope binding. Um, I wanted to do something different with these. I initially started by making something larger, which was this one here. Uh, this one was for Halloween last year, but I never finished it, and I never finished it because I'm a bad parent, and I actually didn't take pictures of my kids' costumes, and I actually made my son his homemade Puss in Boots costume, and it was friggin' amazing. Oh my god, it was so good, and I still have it. I don't know what to do with it. I need to get rid of it somehow. Anyway, this was a larger version of it right here, and this is pretty big. This page here is, I think, six inches wide. Yeah, this one's six, in six inches wide, so my envelope was 12 inches by, I think, 14 inches. So I used a really big envelope for this one, um, the clasp envelope. And I get a lot of my envelopes uh, from the Dollar Tree or the 99 cent store. They, come in, they usually come in packs of six. The larger ones will sometimes come in packs of four or three. So anyway, there you have it my little tutorial on my mini and this one's gonna have a little bit of a thicker spine uh, because I used four envelopes but you will fit a ton of pictures in this one if I was able to fit 53 pictures in this one you'll be able to fit a whole ton of wallets in this one anyway thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoy the tutorial and I'm sorry if it is so long but um, you know it's been a long day and I'm kind of out of it so I couldn't speak very well anyway again thanks for watching and happy crafting